I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will understand greatest integer function. Question here is to sketch the graph of the greatest integer function f of x equals 2 and that's the symbol for greatest integer function. Well it is a new function for many of my students so let me take this opportunity to discuss it in different ways. First and foremost is we can write it in a different way. f of x equals to, that is a symbol for the greatest integer function. At times, you can also see a symbol like this, the square bracket, sorry. That is also a symbol for greatest integer function, right? So both are the symbols. At times, you may also find the symbol with double lines here, right? So there are a variety of ways in which this integer function can be written. Now why did I chose that? The reason here is that it is also referred to as a floor function, right? So another name for this function is floor function. Literally, floor means the bottommost part, correct? So you will understand soon from the definition why it is called floor function and the reason here is we have these bars on the floor type, right? We do have another function which is ceiling function and we'll discuss that in another video. In ceiling function, we write that with the bars on the top side, right? So I'm not discussing that here. But to give you an idea, when we talk about greatest integer function, uh, we are looking for, another name also is floor function, and we are looking for the integer value which is the greatest integer value in the given number and what am I trying to say? Uh, well, let me explain you some other way and uh, let it be like this. If I say f of x at 2.1, then this is equal to uh, integer value of 2. That is to say, if we are looking for greatest integer 2.1, then this is equals to 2. Here the integer, the greatest integer value is 2. We are not really rounding it to 2, right? Even if I write, uh, for example, 7.9, then this is the symbol for greatest integer. That really means 7. So we are actually looking at the integer value, which is 7 in this case. You get the idea, right? So that is the greatest integer part of this function. So you just pick up the number which is before decimal. Drop all the values after the decimal. That's the whole idea. If, if your number is positive, right? So we'll take up some values which are negative and then, then we'll generalize, right? So if we are saying greatest integer for minus 3.2, uh, for example, correct? Now, in this case, what is going to be my answer? Well, think about it like this. If we have a number line, if we have a number line, then then 0 is somewhere here, for example, and then we have minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and minus 4. Now, if I say minus 3.2, then we are looking for a point which is on left side of minus 3. So that means the greatest integer which is included or which is less than this point is actually minus 4. So this answer is minus 4. You get the idea, right? So that is how you have to see the function, right? So at times it could be confusing. If I'm saying 2 plus 2.1, so this is 2, this is on the positive side 1, 2, and this is my 2.1, let us say, right? So if this is 2.1, then the value is to the left side, we have the greatest integer 2, and therefore the answer is 2. You get an idea, correct? So, if I say what is the greatest integer value for minus 1.6, in that case, minus 1.6 will be kind of here, right? So, the greatest integer will be minus 2, right? That is how you have to look into it, right? So what is the greatest integer value for 0 
well it is zero correct so if it is kind of here the integer value which is greatest up to this point is zero so that is the definition of this particular function right so there is a mathematical way of writing it and that is that if we say if if n is an integer such that I need more space so okay such that I can say x is greater than equal to n but less than n plus 1 less than n plus 1 then the greatest integer value of x is equal to n do you understand that is the way we can express all our learnings which we have done right now now when i sketch a graph for it i think it will be absolutely clear to you so that is probably the ultimate way of explaining this function so what we are trying to say here is that if we are having a value from 0 to let us say 1 right so so where the 0 is included do you see that 0 is included that means what this value if I have a value from 0 to 1 where 1 is not included then the greatest integer value will be 0 if I have a value from 1 to 2 but 2 is not included then the greatest integer value will be 1 if I have a value from 2 to 3 where 3 is not included but 2 is included then the value will be 3 correct so I hope that part is clear to you so what we have here is 0 1 2 3 and so on correct on the y side we have 0 1 2 and we're talking about the greatest integer function right don't confuse it with absolute function or any other rounding okay now on the negative side I mean when the values are from negative 1 to 0 in that case it will be like this correct any value in between will result into negative 1 right and likewise we can extend this so that is how the greatest integer function graph will look like correct so we have an open circle at the end on the right side that is when we say n is less than n plus 1 x is less than n plus 1 open circle correct and a closed circle here that is to say that the x values this is closed circle are from n to n plus 1 that is the open interval so that is writing the interval notation right so absolute value in this interval notation will be equal to n that is what we are trying to say I hope I kind of messed it up but I hope with this this is not a standard way of writing let me warn you that but I hope that helps you to understand the concept right so go through these values once again try to understand so greatest integer function is also referred to as a floor function since we take the lower value do you understand lower to that integer correct so for negative values it is even you know sometimes confusing correct so if I have a value minus 0 0.5 for example let me add one more here to explain the point minus 0. Point, let us say 2 in that case the lowest integer will be minus 1 right so if I have a value here then it means minus 1 do you get it minus 2 that is how we define our greatest integer function right the definition is right there and on the number line you can see like this so we have shown you different ways of understanding uh, the function right so that is number line representation so on a number line the greatest integer value is on the left side integer to the left on the number line that is very easy to understand right so just put it there and pick up the value of integer to the left of that 
and that is a floor function the lowest integer correct floor function that's how it gets the name when we talk about ceiling we'll pick up the value on the right that is the only difference correct whenever you draw a graph you'll get a step function as shown here step function right this is also known as step function that's the third name to the same thing where we have a closed circle and then the open circle so that makes it a floor function right so i hope when all these things come together you understand really what is greatest integer function why do we call it a floor function also and we also refer to it as a step function since the graph is kind of a step right so now in the next video we'll take a few questions based on one side limits of greatest integer function i think that'd be interesting thank you and all the best